science fans and welcome to Sciencia. Today, we have part 2 of our Science of Love series focusing on desire, long-distance relationships, and the friend zone. They say falling in love knows no age, and we have a plethora of literature and films showcasing young love. One, two, two and a half, three. At that stage, love is sweet, chaste, and adorable. But then all of a sudden, it becomes weird and awkward and bothersome. I think you know at what age that transition suddenly happens. Puberty. But what is puberty? Puberty is a transitionary phase that is caused by the sudden production of hormones that are responsible for sexual maturity. And no, the change doesn't start in your private parts. It starts in your brain, specifically in a gland called the hypothalamus that produces the hormone gonadotropin. During childhood, your levels of gonadotropin are very, very low. But at the onset of puberty, it suddenly spikes up and it leads to a whole set of changes. Changes that are most related to sexual attraction involving the testes and the ovaries. Testosterone and estrogen are hormones that are typically stereotyped as male and female respectively, but both actually play a role in men and women. Testosterone increases libido in just about everyone. But a recent study on hormone levels and attraction suggests that changes in the hormone cortisol may be stronger associated with the attraction of a romantic partner than testosterone. Cortisol manages how your body uses carbohydrates, fats, and proteins. It regulates your blood pressure, controls your sleep-wake cycle, and boosts energy so you can handle stress better. Cortisol is strongly linked to your fight-and-flight response. So, if you're wondering why you freeze up in front of your crush, yep, it's cortisol's fault. But it is surprising that for others, it sparks up courage and triggers romance. Too much romance and too much stress have something in common though. Too many possible consequences. Consistent high levels of cortisol in the body could lead to anxiety, depression, nerve problems, hypertension, and yes, heart disease. Though love and lust have strong links, some would argue that it's not just about physical contact and romance. Oddly enough, we have people who are happy enough in the friend zone or are even strong enough to survive long-distance relationships. They did not believe until it was too late. And Dariana Harris? Hello, darkness, my old friend. Remember oxytocin? That nasty hormone that makes you feel bonded to someone you're constantly with, even if they hurt you? It has a partner. Vasopressin generally regulates tonicity and controls when we pee. Isn't it strange that the hormone that stops you from peeing is also responsible for you being able to commit? Hmm, I wonder what that says about people who can't hold their pee. But I digress. Vasopressin can also deactivate the neural pathway responsible for negative emotions such as fear and social judgment. When we are engaged in romantic love, the neural machinery responsible for making critical assessments of other people or our situation shuts down. So we continue to love, even if it's hard. We continue to love, even if it hurts us. Mahal, mahal kita. At ang sakit, sakit na. I hope you were able to learn something in our short video today about love's lust and love lost. If you like to see more content like this, give this video a thumbs up. And if you have any comments, questions, or suggestions, whether it's love-related or not, please don't hesitate to let me, your resident Filipina scientist, know in the comments section below. 
Thank you very much and see you around.